Mike Le Bonvie Champagne Club members and Happy New Year. I hope you had a fantastic time with friends and family over the break. I took some time out myself with a beautiful tropical holiday in a very remote part of Thailand which didn't serve much champagne so I'm glad to be back within arm's reach of my cellar. I'm delighted to introduce you to this month's theme which is low atmosphere or low bar champagnes producing elegant and quite creamy cuvées. The wines under the spotlight this month are made by the exceptional house of Bessera de Belfont, based in Epernay, and the gorgeous domain of Lenoir Père et Fils, based in the Grand Cru village of Le Menil sur Auger, in the heart of the Côte de Blanc. But before we launch into the wines, please allow me to introduce you to the house of Lenoir. For those of you who've not yet come across this great producer, I'll give you a little bit of background. Founded in 1872 by the Lenoir family, of course, Bernard Lenoir is one of a number of generations producing very pristine champagne from their own vineyard and as many of the small uh, producers these days are, classified as recoltant manipulant, meaning that they own their own vineyards and they carry out all of the champagne production on their own property. Son Severine and daughter Caroline have joined forces with their father and are now the eighth generation producers, continuing all the hard work producing those terroir focused wines that hone in on the quality and excellence of their predecessors. Today they own about 30 hectares of prime vineyards and they're scattered across the villages of Avise, Auger and Cremont, but a great deal of their sites being in Le Menil sur Auger. Lenoir have vineyard parcels that actually date back to the early 50s. So these parcels produce a much lower yield, a much lower level of fruit, but what I believe to be a more refined and terroir expressive fruit. They tend to pick their fruit up to a week later than their nearby houses, which is quite unusual, but the house really focus on fruit maturity. The house also has flat bottom stainless steel tanks where the wine is left in contact with the leaves for an extended period of time, which is further adding another dimension and texture to their champagnes. Interestingly, all Lenoir champagnes are Blanc de Blanc and all are Grand Cru. The Maison is also certified organic, which is no mean feat. They produce about 250,000 bottles a year and 40% of those are exported to places including Australia. This production amount is about half of our other featured house for this month, the House of Bessera de Belfont. Now, the wine featured for connoisseurs this month is something that I enjoyed with my family on Christmas Day, and it is the wine of Lenoir Quartz Blanc de Blanc. It's blended from several vintages with a combination of older reserve wines, and it contains all Grand Cru Chardonnay from Le Menil sur Auger, including the very famous Le Chetillon's Vignard. Another one of our very favourite producers, Rudolph from the house of Pierre Peters, creates a 100% Le Chetillon Chardonnay focused wine. And this sits at a much higher price point, so this wine is incredible value comparatively. Now, low atmosphere, the theme for this month. What does this refer to? We all know that champagne undergoes secondary fermentation. However, you may not realise that the pressure created from the CO2, the carbon dioxide of the fermentation, is equivalent to six atmospheres of pressure. This is approximately 2.5 times the pressure of your car tyre. This is standard across the champagne industry, six bars of pressure. Low bar pressure means that the wine has been created and bottled at around four atmospheres, sometimes up to 4.5. It's technically referred to as a cromont, which doesn't reduce the number of bubbles, but it does create a softer, finer bubble and a more delicate and subtle wine. This subtlety certainly creates an amazing opportunity to partner and pair with food. And as we all see with our other featured house, who works very closely with chefs, they have been aligning their wines with beautifully created dishes, and that's a big part of what they've set out to achieve with the Maison. So let's taste the Lenoir Quartz.
Okay, so the appearance of the wine. Bright yellow with glints of green, but more importantly, let's talk about the effervescence. The bubble beads very slowly. It moves very slowly, almost like it's in slow motion. It's actually quite beautiful to watch. The bead is incredibly fine. It almost looks like a solid speck and not a bubble at all. The wine is delicate, but by no means shy. On the nose, it's quite lifted with white florals, citrus peel and chalky notes. And this freshness and minerality to continue on the palate with some white fleshy fruits coming through and quite pronounced green apple. The effect of the low pressure is most notable on the palate with the wine leaving a really fine trail of bubbles. It has lovely acidity which drives the structure but without any aggression. This is a much softer approach. The mousse is creamy, it's unctuous and it's moorish. This is in direct contrast to some of the higher atmosphere Blanc de Blancs that can have quite a direct and sharp attack on the palate. I appreciate and love all champagnes, but I'm seeing more of these low atmosphere wines and I understand why certain houses are making this stylistic decision. In terms of a food pairing, I would partner the Lomois Quartz with a fresh kingfish tartare. This is quite easy to prepare, something that's been cured or the fish that's been cured in a zesty lime juice. Next up, we are going to look at the house of Besseret de Belfont and the wine in question for this month is the Rosé. The Rosé is part of the Cuvée de Moines range. Cuvée de Moines translating to the monks blend and despite this designation these champagnes were not developed by the monks at all but by Victor Besserat in 1930. Victor's idea was to create a champagne that could accompany any meal. Indeed as mentioned earlier the whole food pairing concept was a challenge that was set out for the house by the director of the La Samaritaine Deluxe restaurant in the heart of Paris to which in 1930, he said to Victor Besserat, make me a champagne that is sufficiently smooth to accompany the entire meal and I will order a thousand bottles instead of a hundred. And they did. So this sets the scene for the Cuvée de Moines. But let's step back in time and look at the Besserat history. Besserat de Belfont was established in 1843 by Edmond Besserat, who was a local of the haute region. He originally founded the house in the village of Ai. As with most Champagne houses, there is an interesting history behind the name. In 1920, Edmund married Yvonne de Merrick de Belfont, the daughter of a noble Champagne family, giving the house the family crest, and now the Besserat de Belfont legend was born. The house is now based in the village of Epernay, and it produces around 500,000 bottles annually. The current winemaker of the Maison is integral to the spirit of the Besserat house and is a very warm and a very kind gentleman by the name of Cédric Thibault. When at the Maison last year, it was phenomenal to see the technology at play alongside the skill and expertise of Cédric and his very talented team. We walk amongst some incredibly large stainless steel tanks that hold around 4,000 hectolitres of wine. And we headed through where the gyro pellets are, amazing machines, and through to the mechanical disgorgement machines. Finally, we end up in the very deep and the very long cellars, far too big for the needs of Besserat, I must say, but the beautiful cellars of the family. The grapes for Besserat de Belfont are provided completely via contracts with growers in the region. Some of these families have had long-standing contracts with the house and have been passed from generation to generation. Now, of course, many of the Grand Marks who purchase their grapes to supplement their supply do so via contracts. So this is not unusual for such contracts to be in place, particularly over a long period of time. Now the wine that we're featuring this month is one of my preferred champagnes within the range, and that is the Rosé. The Rosé is made using the Assemblage method. It has about 30% Chardonnay, 30% Pinot Noir, and 40% Meunier, so a, a Meunier dominant wine, depending on the year. It has somewhere between 11 to 14 percent of a blend being the red wine. Of course that's dependent on the great quality in each vintage. The red wine that's produced to go into the assemblage will spend somewhere between four and eight days macerating on its skin to extract the colour, the aroma, 
flavour, intensity and of course some tannin. The dosage of this particular champagne, 9 grams per litre and it's been ageing on its lees for about two and a half years. I have to say, Bessarat is one of a small collective of producers in the region who block malolactic fermentation. Another very famous producer who follows this particular style, of course, is the exemplary Maison of Salon. The result is a champagne style that focuses on the flavours associated with malic acid. Green apples, apricots, nectarine, peach and occasionally rosehip. So quite defined uh, and very intense fruit. Now the tasting notes for the rosé champagne. The colour of the wine is glorious. It's mid-weight dusty pink with shimmers of a salmon coloured orange. Again, the beet is incredibly fine. It's rising more steadily than the Lenoir, despite them being at the same level of pressure, which is interesting. The aroma is unique and it's unexpected. There's no Girl Scout sweetness here at all. It's bold, it's intensely savoury, and I instantly think of partnering this dish with meat. The aromas are of rhubarb, dried red currants, and a subtle hint of menthol with other savoury red fruits. The blocking of the malo makes for a super dry wine with mouth-watering acidity, which almost distracts me from the beautiful softness of the mousse on the palate. If you love a dry Provencal style of rosé, then this is the champagne for you. I find this champagne absolutely intriguing. I wouldn't partner this champagne with dessert or anything that's too sweet. Food pairing suggestion for this particular rosé, a rare roast beef. I love this wine. As always, you can write to us for more information at info at lbvchampagneclub.com. We hope you enjoy this month's wine and this month's theme of low bar pressure and we look forward to seeing you next month. Bye for now.